Thank you for joining me today. The year is 2025. Over the past decade, the game development industry has grown into a space where people can pursue game development as a career on their own, in their own way. But game development is not only for professionals. There are many softwares that people can use in order to create games on their own without necessarily requiring programming knowledge. The RPG Maker series of games is one such suite of programs that allows players to create their own games without programming knowledge. This is an excellent learning tool and a great starting place for people who want to get into game development, whether that be for career or just as a hobbyist. Today I will discuss RPG Maker MV and in particular an add-on which allows users to create tactical RPGs or strategy RPGs. There are other softwares such as SRPG Studio, but this is actually quite limited. It only allows users to create RPGs in the exact style of Fire Emblem. Thus, SRPG Studio games are Fire Emblem clones. RPG Maker MV, on the other hand, includes an add-on which allows players to create RPGs with significantly more freedom and would allow users to create games very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics. If we search for RPG Maker MV SRPG, we will find this free download. This is an official add-on from the actual publisher. It's a very robust solution and so far from what I've seen it is the best solution on the market for creating a tactical RPG or a strategy RPG, or may some refer to it as a sim RPG. You may purchase RPG Maker MV and download this SRPG for free. I would recommend adding RPG Maker MV to your wish list as it goes on sale from time to time at a very good price. If we take a look at RPG Maker MV here, it is currently 85% off. This is in Australian dollars. In US dollars, this would be around $12, which is an excellent price for this program. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this program can actually create. We have our test title screen here. You may also use a controller joystick. And you can see right off the bat, we are able to still use environments as we would a typical JRPG. This allows us to explore, use the standard event system, but the battle system is now different. And you can see this solution is quite robust. You can create maps just like any other RPG Maker map. You may have story events and dialogue, and the battle system is very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics. Let's go ahead and button mash to proceed through the game dialogue. Ready. You can see that when we started we were able to change the equipment of our team, but now we will go ahead and start. You can see we can move our characters, and there are indicators as to where we may move a character and attack. We also have an arrow that shows the character movement. All of this programming is done for you. You don't need to do any extra work in order to use this functionality. Simply use the template project. We have access to MP and TP, and we can use all our different skills here. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we perform a standard attack upon the enemy. You can see that we have percentages in terms of our accuracy, and we have a predicted amount of damage. This is similar to Final Fantasy Tactics. Let's hit the Fight button. You can see that you can employ animations so you can see your characters perform their attacks and magic spells. Looks like we have a character with some ranged abilities here. Let's go ahead and move this. We have Load, Magic Bullet, or Magic Gun. Magic Gun opens a menu which allows us to select a skill or a magic spell. You can see this is different from the previous character who had a simple attack command. This action allows us to hit targets from a distance. This is very different from SRPG Studio, which is mechanically extremely simple and again is basically a Fire Emblem clone. 
This system gives you significantly more creative freedom, so if you can think it up for a tactical RPG, there's a very good chance that you will be able to bring your vision into reality with a bit of work. You can see that we also see a report and readout on the amount of experience that we gain. If we click on this character, are we able to see the equipment? Yes. Are we able to change equipment mid-battle? It would appear so. Well, that's quite useful. We can also use the Optimize button. We may also use items. Let's go ahead and click on Miracle. Wow, healing abilities. You can see we can specify magic spells that can affect multiple targets, like Final Fantasy Tactics. Let's see what other abilities we have. Wow, this all looks so fantastic. Uh-oh, looks like I don't have enough TP in order to perform Judgment. You can see that abilities here, indicated by the color, either blue or green, consume either MP or TP. In general, MP stands for Magic Points or Mana Points, and TP generally stands for Toilet Paper. There are status effects, so you may feel free to come up with all kinds of unique and interesting implementations of the RPG genre, specifically the tactical RPG genre, in order to create an interesting experience for your players. This concludes this part of the demonstration. Let's now look at the game engine itself and take a look at how you can create your skills and equipment alongside your characters and enemies. Now, you might be wondering, how do you use the SRPG gear? Let's go ahead and investigate our Steam library. Right-click on RPG Maker MV after downloading the SRPG gear, and click Manage, then Browse Local Files. Here, you will find the DLC folder, which we will open, and you will find SRPG Gear MV. This is the template project. Stop. Do not edit this template project. What you want to do is copy this and create a duplicate somewhere else, wherever you store your projects. So I will right click, copy, and then I will paste that into another folder. Again, this is the template project that includes everything you need to create a tactical RPG. This is RPG Maker MV. You may think, wait a minute, I don't see anything. These screens depict the current map that you have open for editing. It looks a bit dull right now, so let's go ahead and open one of our maps. Now, as we investigate this map, you will see this is the one that we were just exploring. These are the units that we saw available for use during combat, during our test. If we open one of these events by double-clicking, we can take a look at the scripts that we have here. The notes are very important. This is how we identify the type of unit this is. There will be tutorials on this included that will help you figure out how to use this, but your best way to start using this is to look at the example project, to edit it, and to copy and paste with your own edits so that you can learn how to use this system. Overall, this is quite user-friendly and easy to use once you learn how to use it. If we open our database here by clicking on this button, we can take a look at some of our characters here. We have Sydney, who is a ninja, Rachel, who is an armed cleric, Patrick, who is a Spear Knight, some of these units are starting to look familiar. Ah, here's Rufus, our Magic Gunner. This was the unit that performed his actions second during our test run. Let's go ahead and take a look at our classes, which allow us to designate the graphics and the battle performance for those characters. A class can be defined thusly. You may create more classes however you see fit. This would be a great way to create a monster raising game or a monster taming game in which the monster species would be the class. 
you can designate the stat growth here. If you want a Spear Knight to be stronger, let's go ahead and double click on the stat growth for attack. You may change this however you like. You can generate your curves by defining them. You have quick settings and you can change the values at specific levels. You may do this for all of the stats that your characters use. I'll go ahead and cancel this. You can see that if we look at the witch, the witch's attack stat is quite low, but her magic attack is higher. This is typical of a modern video game. Let's take a look at our skills. Now, looks like we have all kinds of different attacks that look duplicate. But for this particular style of game, for this engine, this is important because these attacks pertain to each unique particular class. These indicate with a note here, we may use one slot as a note and for organization's purpose. This particular item is never used. It is used simply as a label for the developers to space things out and to organize. This is for weapons and it says, ranged attacks and this is for attacks for weapons with special formulae your best bet to learn is to edit some of these moves then to run and test the game and see how your changes affect gameplay this is an excellent method for learning as it allows you to reverse engineer existing game logic you can see we also have commands load magic bullet which we saw with Rufus. If we change this to something different, just so we can see a change, let's go ahead and make that load M bullet. Let's go ahead and have a look at classes and see if we can identify where that change has occurred. So if we click Magic Gunner, are we able to find our skills there? it looks like it has not appeared here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our actors for Rufus. And it looks like we have some notes here. Now it seems like the SRPG requires that we use the notes here. This is considered programming. It's only a little bit of code, but it looks like we are able to use some coding in the notes in order to control the logic for our characters during battle. It's a little bit different from creating a standard RPG game using the RPG Maker MV engine, and so it's important to take a look at the example project and any tutorials that you may find to help you learn how to use these. You can see that the notes are quite vital when it comes to controlling the logic for our tactical RPG using the SRPG gear. We can take a look at weapons here and define all the different weapons. You can see again, the developers here have used one slot as a label so they can organize their weapons. Everything in this section will be a katana. Everything in this section will be a gauntlet. This is not programmatic. This is not set in stone. This is merely organizational. So this is what we would consider best practice so that way all of our bow weapons are here and we don't scatter them by having more bow weapons down here which makes them hard to find. This is a good way to organize your weapon types but it is important to plan ahead and make sure you leave yourself enough slots. If we take a look at our classes, for example the ninja, we can define which skills and weapons this character is able to use by defining traits. You can see that there is a trait here that says equip weapon katana. If we right click and edit or hit the return key on your keyboard, you may define any other traits. Let's go ahead and click on equipment, equip weapon, and now this character will be able to use swords. This is how you control which equipment a character class may use. Taking a look at our skills again, our notes allow us to control its behavior in the SRPG gear. So we have map battle equals true and no rewards equal true while SRPG range is zero. Let's go ahead and take a look at something like Shuriken. 
And you can see here, we are able to define the sRPG range of 4, and the sRPG minimum range is 2, which means that we can only hit between 2 and 4. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other skills and let's edit them so we can learn how to use this. Heal was an ability that we saw before. Right now, the range is 3. Let's go ahead and change this to 6. And for the area range, instead of 1, let's make this 2 and see what happens. Let's click OK. Now we will run our game again. We will save our changes to the game. We'll move Gunner here, and we shall wait this time. And you can see the changes that we made. Instead of saying load magic bullet, it now reads load M bullet. Let's go ahead and wait. Now we have Rachel, who has our healing spell. Let's see what difference our changes have made. Wow! This spell sure can reach very far. It reaches much farther than it did before, and you can see it affects more units simultaneously. This spell has now become something which the youth of the 2020s refer to as OP, or Overpowered. Let's go ahead and use this spell. Wow. Fantastic. What a wonderful spell. RPG Maker MV SRPG Gear also includes a great feature called Auto Battle. This is very useful if you design your game to include some grinding elements which allow players to battle low-level enemies in order to build up materials, resources, and items. It's a great way to earn experience points. In the 2020s, young hip people use the term grinding to refer to performing any sort of rote task repeatedly in order to gain some small reward that builds up over time into something more valuable and tangible. As you can see, we may also perform mid-level saving. One of my personal favorite features of the SRPG gear is the use of counter-attack actions. This character here will explain. In SRPG combat, when you are attacked by an opponent, you can take action in response. This is called a counter-attack. Now you can change the way you counter-attack using an item called a bracelet. Let's go ahead and take a look at what options this character offers. Wow, there sure are many options. Be sure to take a close look at this and apply any of these items or game concepts to your own games. Here is another such mission in which we have been assigned a task. So, we can create missions that ask the player to perform certain things other than just defeating enemies. Here we have the victory condition of obtaining three herbs, and the defeat condition is defined as all friends are dead, which will happen to you one day. It will. There's no avoiding it. Be ready for it. Now, how shall we obtain the treasure chest? Let's move to this spot and occupy the space and wait. And it looks like the character opened the treasure chest by occupying the same space. Another one of the greatest features of this RPG Maker engine is that for SRPGs or tactical RPGs, you may use the mouse and cursor in order to control combat. For people that play PC games, they may find this method of control quite familiar. You may control your units and all your menu elements this way. What a convenient way to control your tactical RPG. Thank you very much for watching this instructional video. I hope this has been helpful and useful to you. Do check out RPG Maker MV when it is on sale for an excellent price. The SRPG gear is a free download. Best of luck to you. And remember, always do your best and strive for excellence.